Thank you, lovely viewers, and thank you so much. Uh, I know that there is a delay in our preview, but today is a wonderful day over here in New York. It's kind of, once again, my name is Catherine Kujo, as you all know, popularly known as Ki Mama. Today, I have a special guest, and we're going to have a conversation, as you know, I always do over here. You can see I'm kind of relaxed. And you can see the uh, handsome gentleman right here in front of me. You know, he might look familiar. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to say much because, you know, he's a guru. Welcome to Key Mama Show, Mr. Harry Sankra, Ambassador One. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Key Mama. My greetings to your viewers. They accept your, your greetings. So welcome, kindly introduce yourself uh, for us, uh, your brief background. Uh, thank you. Well, um, as, as you said, my name is Horace Niai Ankara. Um, I like to be called Niai for short. Okay. Um, born in Accra, bred in Kumasi, um, attended Tech Primary and eventually um, I decided college in Cape Coast, and then um, I had all my university education in the UK. Um, I did politics, sociology, and masters also in politics. Um, the first Ghanaian ever to have masters in international conflict. And um, I have two children; they're both medical officers in the UK. And um, I love politics. I love football. I love my Jesus. Okay, and, um, I love your Jesus. <laughs> so what really, <laughs> what, what really motivates you, because you say you love politics, the word love itself, what really motivates you to get involved in that sector? Well, uh, I, think, I think from day one, when I realized that this is Horace Ankara, um, I, I have always wanted to be um, a leader, I'd always wanted to be a philanthropist. I'd always wanted to be the one who holds somebody's hand um, onto a platform where he or she has never been before. Uh, so for that matter, I also saw politics as an area where I can actually be of help to others. And um, that has led me into politics so that uh, obviously I'll get the opportunity to enhance somebody's life. Having said that, um, as a philanthropist, I've already, since 1991 to date, um, <clears throat> given, I've given opportunity to over 6,000 um, kids to go to school, uh, both in the UK and Ghana. So I just look at enhancing one's life um, through philanthropic work and politics. Okay. So before we, we dive into uh, the politics area with the current uh, situation going on in Ghana and everything, also uh, mm -hmm. stretching your background, uh, you are also a public speaker. You do that on the uh, yeah. level or just as a leisure? Well, I'm, uh, I'm a public, public speaker. Um, motivational speaker. And I, I was doing that a lot in the UK when I was in, I was in the UK, uh, in schools, universities, prisons, um, name them, just to sort of like um, motivate people and um, do my best to change their lives and um, let them know that they shouldn't accept their situation as at that time, but then there, there are better days ahead. And um, I've been able, through the uh, grace of the almighty have uh, changed lives. So uh, do you still do it in Ghana or this is, was in the past? Uh, it, was, it was in the past. Um, I, do, I do a bit of consulting in Ghana, uh, mostly uh, individuals or small groups. I do do that, but um, it was far, far bigger in the, in the UK than uh, what I'm experiencing in Ghana at the moment. So I'm looking forward to come for consultation very soon. <laughs> I hope you accept me. What, what, Key Mama, what is your problem? What, what, what do you want to come out of? Oh, I can't say that in public. 
you know, a lot of years oh, okay, of listening. Man. So I'll come in chambers. Uh, also, uh, you are event planner. I'm interested in that because that's my area. Um, well, it, it's, it's, it's not uh, my kind of area as such, um, but I do my best to let things happen. Um, but I, I wouldn't say it's, it's my forte, but um, I do do a bit of that. Uh, I, I, it's, it's, not, it's not my strength, no. Okay, okay. Uh, the, the crime prevention aspect, do you still work in that area in Ghana or that also was in the past? Well, the crime prevention aspect, um, I have a security company, um, Denot, Denot Security Network, and um, we also do a bit to making sure that um, crime in the country is sort of like um, toned down a bit. Um, there are so many things that uh, we could do as a country to making sure that, I mean, crime, uh, that, that's, that's, you, you, can't, you can't eradicate it um, a hundred percent, but at least you can do something about it. So they're not security network. Uh, we also doing our bit to making sure that uh, you, you and I as Ghanaians, foreigners in this country are secured. Uh, being said that, security in the country now, that's my opinion. But, but like, keep, mama, keep mama, uh, bear, bear, bear this in mind. Um, when we talk about security, um, it is not just about probably you walking down the street and being harmed by somebody. Um, security involves in, in so many things, housing, uh, that is shelter, uh, food, there's so many areas. Uh, and I, I believe that um, <clears throat> when we talk about democracy, um, that, that is the, 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 the first and last of democracy, the security about the, 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 the Ghanaian. So, so many forms of um, security, but they're not security, it's more to do with uh, human protection. Human protection. Uh, can you break it down for us to understand human protection? <laughs> oh, I, I mean, the kind of man-to-man um, -man protection, property protection, um, business, uh, uh, arena protection, um, stuff like that. Um, so we, we, we sort of protect uh, properties and individuals. Okay, so based on individuals, Ghana recently, we've been hearing or seeing so many crimes going on. People don't feel secure, you know, walking around certain time, gone where the days uh, trust me, you know, I, I like to walk in the night, but now if I visit Ghana, trust me, 6 p.m., I'm done. You won't see me roaming around unless I have the yeah. phones behind me. So uh, it's not safe. Personally, I've experienced some attacks and robbery. So that makes me nervous. And from what I heard now, it's not that better. What can you do from your point of view and as a security, uh, human security? What do you think we are falling short or who is not doing what? Well, I, I think, I think um, the, the, what is happening in the country in terms of crime is, is, is simply because of, um, what should I say? Um, the, the Ghanaian, the Ghanaian is not giving what the Ghanaian is supposed to be giving. What, when I say that, I, I mean that when you talk about democracy, you are talking about making sure that the Ghanaian is educated, the Ghanaian is <clears throat> um, sheltered, the Ghanaian is fed. Uh, what do you call it? Medicare, the Ghanaian is giving that. All, uh, what, what should I say? All at the expense of government. Now, what we realize in this country is that there are so many people who are being denied these things. Now, when somebody is so poor, somebody is, 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 is just below the poverty line. I mean, at the end of the day, you find these people being uh, enticed by 
crime. And then what they tend to do is A is robbing B, B is robbing C, just to make sure that they, 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 they get something to eat. So I believe that government has a lot to do to making sure that employment, most Ghanaians are employed, the youth. Most people have where to sleep. Most people have easy access to the hospitals, Medicare. Now, Kimama, can you imagine 21st century, here in Ghana, we pay for what? An injection? Can you imagine 21st century? You go to the hospital, you pay for plaster? You pay for cotton wool? 21st century, the Ghanaian who is earning just 700 Ghana cities is paying for a simple blood test. Can you imagine that if I, Horace Ni Ayankra, wanted to be employed by any corporation, company, whatever it is, the medical examination, you just can't pay. The Ghanaian, after getting involved in an accident, will then have to pay for physiotherapy. 21st century. They simply cannot afford these things. So what do they do? They will always make sure that they rob Peter to make sure that they can pay Paul. Paul who is actually charging them 1,200 Ghana cities just to make sure that they get rid of the toothache that they are having. Everything is so expensive. So at the end of the day, I think that all these areas have to be addressed. And trust me, if these things are addressed and the Ghanaian is so comfortable, crime rate will also come down. Okay. So now, based on expertise in security, you have tell us all we need to do and what to be done. I, I love politics. I, I love politics. My expertise is really into politics. And, so that is, <laughs> that is where I'm diving into. So as a politician, uh, I don't know how many years you've been in politics. And I don't know the hmm. level that you are, whether you are, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, roadside politician, <laughs> social media <laughs> politician, a politician, politician. You know what I said, the different level. So uh, what level are you and what can be done in the political aspect? Because now in Ghana, we have two major political parties. This one goes, this one comes. They are like a brother and sister. This one goes, this one comes. And mm. they, 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 you know, they preach the same story. When this one is out, this one come and say this. When this one comes in, they say this. It's very interesting, so I don't do politics. But since that's your area and that's what you love to do, and you've seen this security issue and it's not getting better, you will see somebody who will grab like a goat or chicken or something and will get 10 years and somebody will spend like, a, you know, money people's money, government's money, somebody will be hired to uh, work for the government. Within a few months, the person has built mansions, cars, which they came in without, you know, showing their assets. And the people who knows them in the community know that this person is like key mama, you know, nothing, zero. And all of a sudden, V8, mansions here and there what can be done so uh, the younger one get jealous now they go after the rich people and even the poor people on the street just to make ends meet as a politician i don't know which party you belong to but <laughs> what do you think can be done if you don't mind to tell us which party and if the party that you belong to been uh, has been in power before because we have so many political parties maybe your part your party yeah. has been in power before so you are trying to yeah. get there when you get in power what will you do and if you are in power what will you do to change it well um until until um the recent victory by the mpp in the 2020 elections to uh, put uh, the score at three three um, I belong to the most successful political party in the country, that's the NDC, um, the, the, the party with the numbers. 
um, the party that has brought development to this country, I mean, since uh, the inception of the uh, First Republic. Um, so I'm NDC, and I, once upon a time, I was the chairman of the NDC in the UK and Ireland. And um, I had the opportunity to also be appointed uh, to what do you call it, China, to represent the country. So um, by the grace of God, I'm, I'm not a wayside politician. I'm somebody who is really involved in the NDC, but um, I don't see myself as somebody who has to restrict himself with the, with, with the goings and doings and stuff like that of the NDC, but at least to making sure that um, my belonging to the NDC will also enhance governance because whether we are in government or in opposition, we have a part to play in governance. At the moment, we are in opposition. And I believe that um, we will conduct ourselves properly in parliament to making sure that um, uh, uh, the part that we have to play in governance, we do that. Now, having said that, um, the second part of, of, of um, your submission was to address um, what I should say corruption, because uh, uh, yes, it is true that we do see young folks come into government and before you could say Jack, they have mansions, they have all sorts of uh, 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 properties that uh, they, they, they wouldn't be able to tell you and I where they got that from. Um, it is something that we have to check. The accountability that um, as President Rawlings kept talking about. But then, what do we see in this country? We have a very, very poor birth and death system. We have a very poor national identification system. So anybody at all can be anybody. Anybody at all could have any property that would then say that, look, this property is not mine, it is actually an uncle's. You understand? poor national identification, unlike the United States, unlike the UK, where addresses are what we play by, so that you know who is in there, you know who is moving out, and you know who has just moved in. We have a poor system, the national identification. So uh, it's, it's very easy to acquire so many properties um, around uh, the country with ill-gotten money, and nobody can trace that this is key mames. So um, until we, we get to that point, which everybody should play his or her part, um, it, will, it will be very, very difficult. I have been preaching that until Ghana gets national identification so perfect, corruption will be there. Corruption will be there. But if we can tell, look, I am Horace Ankara. I see myself as a public figure. And it's not that I see myself as a public figure. I am a public figure. But what is it is, is that the system cannot even pick me up. When I drive down the street and I say I'm Horace Ankara, which system is going to pick me up? We don't know you. Nothing. You okay, understand? Let me ask you a quick but, question. You know, uh, somebody, two people want to join us. OK. 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 I hope they show their face. Uh, maybe they want to uh, talk to. They want to see me too. I don't. I don't know. Uh, can you show your face if you are connecting? Uh, I hope it's a friend, not a phone. <laughs> okay. So um, this this issue has been there for years. Yeah, it's, it's uh, been there for years. And, and, so the, and the, 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 what's the difference? My, my point. Well, um, well, I think I think um, um, government is doing its best to making sure that national identification is is up there, so that at least we know who is who and who is building what and uh, what building belongs to who. That this address is for this particular person. Uh, how how did you get a second property before you can get a second property? Things that you have to go through and stuff like that. They are simply not there. And this is coming from, the, you know, the, 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 the African, the Ghanaian. We, we, we love this extended family kind of issue. Right. So it is very easy for, it is very easy for Horizonkra to say that 
oh no this this building is not mine it's actually for a cousin right. and then you mentioned some cousin's name and that that's that's what it is but if we have proper national identification we could actually identify this cousin of yours find out what he or she does how much money he or she earns and how he or she put up that uh, particular building you understand now we all drive big cars around all that the car has to do is come through the port and that's it. Nobody, nobody but can we try, track it or no, 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 no. You see, you see, we don't even register them at the port. And these cars just go out. Who is this car for? It could be addressed to Key Mama, but actually it's for Sangra. So where is this car going to? Who is registering it? You never ever see this car registered, but this car will be there for about what six months to a year no number plate or a dv plate the police is not inquisitive enough to stop said vehicles and find out where they're coming from where they're going and who is driving it these are some things that we have to check to actually reduce crime in this country wow so um you are expecting that in the future, because uh, with the uh, identification card, I think it's now in the process. It's being done, right? Uh, well, it's been done to a, a, a point. I mean, some of us do have the uh, identification card, uh, the ECOWAS identification card. But Key Mama, what I am trying to say is this. Now, if I were driving in Tamale, at this point in our development, you should be able to tell that that is for a Sankra going in that particular car just because of the car number. You understand? And even when I get down from the car and you ask, who are you? And I say to you, this is for a Sankra. You should be able, yeah, at the press of a button, have all my details. Where I live, where I work, my age, my height, everything. So have you shared this idea uh, with uh, the department that- Key Mama, Key Mama, Key Mama, the big men, everybody, they know it. All the big men you can see in Ghana, they've all lived in the UK before, they've lived in the US before, they've done all sorts of things before. So what do you think but, uh, the reason why they are not, you know, implementing it uh, because it will help everyone? Well, they, they're implementing it up to uh, to a certain uh, level, but not not the the, the, the right level because um, somebody will say there's no money, but then there's enough money to making sure that. Um, <clears throat> anyway, we'll get there. And as a private <laughs> entity, now you you are, you're not uh, you're not working under the government. You are private, so uh, a private yeah, we know we know the NDC is not in government. Yeah. Uh, but I mean that uh, NDC is not in government, I know, but as in person, you are a private yeah. business person. Can't you uh, go in for that contract? Because some of the contract, you know, they give away the sublets. Can't you go in for that contract since you have knowledge about it and take hold of that contract and make sure, you know, all these things flow the way it's supposed to be? They, they don't have like a bead, um, a bead for people to go in for private. Well, 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 this, these things, these things are, are, are there. These things are there. And um, they've got the people who in the contrast and they know who, who do what and stuff like that. Oh, but within the government, it's, 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 it's only for the government. Um, okay, 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 Kima. Key Mama, one day I'll, 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 I'll try to win a contract. You, I think uh -huh. we have to leave that. Yeah, but what that's I'm trying what I'm to trying. say is that, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know what, what, what you're trying to achieve. Um, uh, but at the same time, um, I believe that um, our democracy is young. Uh, we keep saying it's young. Everything in Ghana is in East and Brownish stages. I believe that we'll get there. But all that I'm saying is that we have the opportunity to do certain things right. You understand? 
for example, if we can put a little bit of revolution into our beds and decks, that can be a starting point to making sure that people are properly registered. When people die, it is properly recorded. As you and I speak, yeah, as you and I speak, uh, Auntie Equidria is, 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 is somewhere on the farm, yeah? Nobody nine months pregnant, nine months pregnant, screaming at the moment in labor. And then Kofinti, who is the husband, tells Adria Mansa, the daughter, run, run home and tell uh, grandma that this is what is happening. Who is registering this newborn baby? The grandma just come down to the farm, help this lady to give birth, and then Kwam uh, 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 Kwe is born. Where does Kwam Kwe go? Who registers Kwam Kwe? That is exactly what I'm talking about. Let us make sure that births and deaths are properly decentralized. Let us make sure that we have district hospitals so many areas to register these newborn babies. We keep saying that these newborn babies could be registered at district offices and stuff like that. Go check, nothing is happening. Because you know some, these villages are way, way somewhere that you can't tell Accra from that place, whether Accra is north of that place or south of that place. Yeah, okay. Now I wanted to pull your leg a little bit. Uh, since you're a diehard NDC, you just told us, are you looking forward <laughs> for any appointments, like apart from like being an MP or something? Do you have any secrets under your sleeve you want to share with us uh, in case your party comes to power? No, 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 no. I mean, Horizonka will never contest to become an MP. Uh, I have my way of contributing to uh, enhance the Ghanaian life. Um, uh, whichever position that I'm in, I always see myself as somebody who should be there for the Ghanaian, not necessarily being there for the NDC uh, and people of the NDC, but for the Ghanaian. And that is that is me. Um, I, I'm not looking forward to contesting uh, for MP ship or anything of that sort. I am the kind of like, um, what should I say? Um, you like to take the You appoint me to do something. No, 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 not the back seat. I mean, you appoint me to do something and I'll, I'll do it to the best interest of the country. That, that is that is me, and um, I, I see I see the future being bright for the NDC, and um, I also see the future being bright for Ghanaians if they um, do their best to bring back the NDC um, back to power. Because at the moment, at the moment, you you are in the United States, but you don't know what is happening. Would you believe that yesterday I was buying um, uh, what do you call it? I said to this girl, can you give me three cities of banana? And he said to me, no, we don't do three cities. We do five cities, seven cities. Yes, banana. One banana or a bunch? Aquadu. Bunch. Aquadu. I mean a bunch. Impua. <laughs> My child, the impua. In the, in the what's in there? Koto impua. In Tunkada, to impua one city. Onyo kakeshi ohe aquadu one city. Aho Akwadu one city. Nobody is selling one city of banana. It's from five cities, seven cities, 10 cities. Otherwise you can have it. Wow. Yes. You see, and, and that, that, that should tell you where we are in this country. The only country on earth that is living COVID-19. 1% of VAT is what? Uh, 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 COVID levy. The only country, well, the only country that, that area, and you jump to that. The only country that has actually made sure that those of us whose businesses, because I mean, I mean I'm, I'm also into uh, uh, restaurant, restaurant kind of thing, that businesses collapse Nobody is helping anybody in those sectors and stuff like that. But hey, very soon, whatever you do, 
whether you are up there or you're down there or you're middle, 1% COVID levy. How? Well, apart, from, uh, apart from taking uh, the money at the airport, $150 that comes in, then you have to pay that levy too. And the government is not even- Once you are, once- Any- uh, Once you are a Ghanaian, mm -hmm. once you are a Ghanaian, that you are into business or whatever it is, VAT now has that element of 1%. And if you have that element of 1%, it affects everything. It affects everything. You just think about you moving VAT from, let's say, 20% to 21%. It affects everything. Wow. You understand? And, 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 and I, I don't think that that is helpful enough. The Ghanaian is already suffering. The Ghanaian is already being underpaid. The Ghanaian is already unemployed. The Ghanaian in this 21st century is paying for cotton wool when he or she uh, goes to the hospital. And then you then have 1% COVID levy. Government that is that is that is that is inhumane. And, and and the people are not voicing out. The majority no, of you people think, are you not see, voicing out. You, people are not voicing out because the arrogance of leadership, the arrogance of leadership is that as I have slapped it on you guys. Take it or leave it. The arrogance of leadership. Hmm. Why don't we debate things? Why don't we discuss things? Why don't we make sure that it is to the benefit of the Ghanaian before you implement it? Why do you want to implement it? Because you spoke to the poor. You said things that sweeten the years of the Ghanaian when he or she is going to the poor. Then he votes for you. She votes for you. And then she comes back to the house where he has no three square meal. And then if he or she has to go out and buy something, now VAT on it has changed. Because uh, it's very unfortunate. They, they, they have a reason why. They, they can explain what they use the funds for. What, 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 what is the reason? What is the reason? We are living in a country where when COVID yeah, hit this country, within three weeks, we were down the corridors of IMF and the World Bank. But this is a country where we were told that the economy is robust, that the economy is doing so well. Kibama, you're coming down to Ghana in August. I am telling you, I, Horace Ni, I, Ankara is telling you, and those of you in the diaspora, I have been, I have lived in the diaspora for 31 years. Don't scare us. I can tell the difference. Me and Kebo Akeshi, this time round there, you come tell the banana seller that you want two CDs of banana. You can't. It has five CDs. It is, it, it, it is a fact. You can't. If I care about Akeshi, one two CDs. Or if I say you two CDs. No way. You understand? Oh, me trying to see. Well, I know. I got to go about it. Wasn't you see? It is another area. The banana wasn't even planted in the USA. The banana was maybe exported to the USA from South Africa or Mexico. from wherever. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you 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 export. In other words, import it into Ghana, where banana is in abundance that you can buy. Oh, Minnie Salina. <sighs> like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not a politician, so uh, it's sad. And when you no, 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 it's it's not this. Talk about this, it, this, this, this is continues. this is not politics. This this is this is um, caring for the Ghanaian. And I I am of the view, I am of the view that we have not actually cared for the Ghanaian enough, because. I always see democracy. Which is as, both which is both parties. Are you both parties? Both, yes, both parties 
Yeah, yeah, yeah both parties. No, 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 seriously, both parties. Yeah. Because I, I see democracy as, uh, 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 what, what should I say? A system full of discipline and a system that is enhancing the Ghanaian at the cost, yeah, at the cost of government. It's, it's, you see, the economy has to work for the Ghanaian, not the Ghanaian working for the economy. It's as simple as that. As any government, I had a gun and you were a hair jolly. Government, no, I was so bit me, I'm a gun and you know, but oh no, that is democracy. When I walk down the lane, I have to find a good running school. When I walk down the corner, I have to find a very good hospital or a clinic. If I walk up the hill, I should get a well run public transport system. I mean, these are the things, but the Ghanaian is not seeing them. The Ghanaian is not enjoying them. Our educational system. Double track. About 25% about of schools are not even under Ghana education service. Or they are private. Whether you are private or not, you should be registered under the Ghana education service. I happen by the grace of God to be the first Ghanaian ever to establish his own independent school in the UK. Why didn't the UK authorities say that, oh, you are private? You must be joking. You have to be under, uh, what do you call it? DFG, whatever it is, that is the educational system. And you are inspected. In Ghana, nobody inspects anyone. In Ghana, in Ghana where my office is, there are so many private schools. You can't find any public school around. And you find private schools situated on less than a plot, no playing field. Where in America, where in the UK, where in Germany, can you establish a school without a playing field? No. Thank you. Education is part of everything. A playground is, is a must have. Even the community must so, have a community uh, a so, playground. So you see how the Ghanaian child is being taken for granted. You see how the Ghanaian as a parent is being taken for granted. You see how governments do not care about the Ghanaian. Please, if we say we're practicing democracy, let us enhance the Ghanaian in terms of shelter, in terms of education, in terms of Medicare, in terms of everything at the expense of government. Wow, I hope it's easy, like you just mentioned, and we hope maybe along the line, someone might pick up our conversation and work on it because they listen to the social media and uh, the people of Ghana, my brothers and sisters back home have to voice out. They have to put uh, parties aside and look the broad aspect of the need, human need, like you said, human security and voice out. Not because I belong to party A, party B or party C. So if I speak, then my party will be offended. Recently, recently, uh the Accra, uh, i think uh, mayor for environment mm. tried to clean up the place and uh their own party person came out and said hey uh what you're doing we are going to lose votes for you demolition uh you know where um like structures and stuff sitting which is not proper there's no beautification in the city and they try to clean and their own party say hey we need their vote so let them be there so it's like they entertain certain things uh i, I you know i know myself when I, once i'm going there i'll hit it so hard that it might hit somebody so i just stop it but no you see you you see you you, you are not going to hit anybody and if you can't go there and hit somebody hard then you are not doing the Ghanaian any favors. You have to go there and hit hard because watch this, please. You are part of the media and the media is so vital when it comes to democracy. 
the media. So whatever you see is wrong. It, it depends on the language. When you use the right language, people will know that, yes, you are doing the right thing. You understand? I mean, what do we mean by we need their votes? You know something? It's all about leadership. Right. It's all about leadership. I agree. If you can, if you can make you. sure. I'm not cutting you. I yes. agree with you, but the people that you are trying to fight for are not in support. So why do you have to be yelling or screaming on top of your voice fighting for them? If they take the lead, then we, the media, will support. But you will be speaking and the same people will- Key Mama, Key Mama, Key Mama. Key Mama, can I ask you a question? Sure. Are you sure you enjoyed every single day at nursery? In the nursery as a child? As a child, do you think that each day that your mom or dad took you to the nursery, you were so happy to go? Oh, not really. No, no, you can't be yes. here all the time. Yes, at times, at times you'll be crying. Sure. You wouldn't want to go. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to go. Right. Mom or dad will, mom or dad will make sure that you went. Yeah. Oh, really. Have you benefited? Oh, sure. Yeah, Thank I you. am now. So, yeah. So this is what it is. Leadership. If you know that that is very good for the people, implement it. With time, the people will see the benefits of what you have done. I think and instead I of them become, saying, <laughs> I have to become a, a politician for my voice to be heard, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, you are a politician. Uh, once you are in the media, you, you are a politician, and once you. And once, once you have more than a child, once you have more than a child and you're giving somebody the red shirt and the other the blue shirt, you are a politician. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not that area politician. I, I, <laughs> I refuse to be a politician. Anyway, it's 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 an honor to have you on Key Mama Show. So tell us what we don't know about you before you leave, and advice you have for the youth in Ghana now because they are so aggressive. They wanted to be rich overnight. You know, they don't want to crawl before they walk. They want to start, you know, running. So what advice? And it, we've seen things that goes on every day, the killing, even your neighbor, your neighbor's child. They have no empathy, no sympathy. They see brings money here and there. So as a businessman, as a successful businessman, as a politician, what advice are you going to give to the youth? Well, um, the one side that I, I probably people don't know about me is that I'm a lay preacher and I can fill a church. I'm a lay preacher who can fill a church and um, I, I could do stuff and then, um, you think that a prophet has just landed in your city, but then uh, I, I, I use I use common sense and practicalities. Um, but 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 to the youth, but to the youth, you know the problem that we are having in Africa is is all about leadership. It's all about the, the right provision. I mean, if the youth can see employment just at the corner of his or her street, why why do you think that youth is going to bother anybody else? If the youth can see a very a well-run school down the, 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 the road, why wouldn't he or she accept that to take him or her there? You see, I have, I have defined my understanding of, uh, uh, what do you call it, democracy to you. Anything short of that, the youth will just not be comfortable. Even the, uh, the, 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 the adults will not be comfortable, let alone the youth. But I will say to the youth that they have to be patient. They have to take their education very seriously. Um, they shouldn't sort of like give up and they shouldn't see themselves as uh, people who should, um, let's say, um, it's, 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 it's like, you, you always have to end up in the university. No, you can veer into this TVET kind of um, um, training apprenticeship stuff like that get yourself into something and find some work to do 
not necessarily waiting for somebody to employ you. I, I think that there are a few things out there that, um, that you can do um, to making sure that they enhance themselves. But if we are practicing democracy, please let us make sure that we use leadership to define democracy properly and provide for the Ghanaian, especially the youth in education, shelter, um, accommodation, Medicare and stuff like that. And trust me, I believe that um, so many things that we see as wrong will turn out to be right. Thank you. So your company once again is there not security? Well, the security aspect of what I do is called dare not security. It means that you dare not. So why against the eye? You dare not. <laughs> you dare not. <laughs> yes, I, I, I remember. I remember we were trying to get a name for it, and anything that we submit is like, oh, it's gone. You can't have that name. And I was reading this book, Dare Not Linger, by um, what do you call it, Mandela, and the book was right in front of me in the office. So I look at the title of the book, Dare Not Linger. Oh, okay, okay, Dare Not Security. So uh, I guess I look forward to get a personal uh, bodyguard when I arrive. I submitted that and they say, oh, and then, and then, and then, and then, that, that'll be fine. And then uh, we have um, hand construction um, that we sort of like construct. And then we have, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, my consultancy you're, in you're into rare education, education as well. Uh, you build and sell? Or... No, no, no. Yeah. No, no, I, I'm not into real estate. Okay. I, I'm That's not into game. real estate. I, I'm, I'm doing bits and pieces to just buy time and then make sure that the NDC comes back to power in 2024. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Are you convinced? I am convinced that uh, in 2024, Afghanians will give us the mandate because um, uh, it's, it's, it's really tough. It's really I'm tough. Good. The dollar is at the dollar is at six cities now. The um, uh, uh, um, uh, the pound is what at seven cities now. I mean, hey, please. It's business business is suffering. Now. Business is suffering. It mm. is well. It is well. So, like I said, <laughs> when I come to Ghana, I look forward to get a bodyguard. And uh, oh yes, I think I think when you come to when you come to Ghana, you get somebody bodyguarding you. It depends right. whether you want it for twenty four hours, twelve hours, whatever it is. And probably it will depend on how deep is your pocket. Nobody knows. And what's the what is the range? You mind to share with oh. the, uh, listeners and viewers? No, 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 no. We are reasonable, very competitive, and I think that what we offer is first and foremost, the security of the individual, the security of the company, the security of what we are asked to make sure it is secured. Uh, not necessarily, um, I know that yes, in, in every entity it profit first, but we look at um, the security of what we have to secure first. Okay. Uh, do you want to give uh, your business number out in case someone wanted to contact you? For a personal or for a home, do you have a business number? You I, 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 I will put it on your Facebook. I'll put it on your Facebook. Oh, okay. okay. I'll let you have it. Yeah, I'll let you have it and you share it on your Facebook. Okay, okay. So yeah. thank you very much for joining us today. Niliakeshi, homecoming ne, wabanabu. It will mean you call. Che onya nyu mefe na mefe kwa me yaka me baba shia. Security is secure. They're not security. Well, it's my pleasure being with you. No, 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 Alaska alone we found the Omodin Akashin. you find the right persons to register with them. Kony August now we find we work with Gaspon there now. Kony we find Akashin. We find we can break bread. We can break and we break it. Oting, oting, boy, we can come in, oting. 
money come Yo, Bora, I don't want to call Thank you very much. I look I forward to it. I bet you that. I bet you that. It is my uh, pleasure. Next interview when you come to power. <laughs> certainly. Certainly. Thank you. God bless you. So we'll see, we'll see you. We'll see you and your friends in August. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, okay. lovely viewers. Pleasure. This is the end of our program, pleasure. and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye bye.